All right, guys, Nikki and them, big topic. Big topic in the series of brainwashed cult and all that silliness. I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashiva. Hindu phobia. Swamiji talks about it, and there's also another uh, activist, Hindu activist, Rajiv Malhotra, if you do not know. Um, he also talks about it. And I just saw it yesterday and I thought, oh, I have to share the cognitions I have about Hindu phobia and why I think it is present. Basically, Hindu phobia is the source of all forms of hatred towards Hinduism, in all forms, open hatred or disguised hatred, everything. What is Hindu phobia? Phobia means fear. Hindu means fears of Hindus. So I was thinking, why would Hindu phobia exist? What would people fear about Hinduism? Because Hinduism is all about peace, it's all about powerfulness, it's all about all-inclusiveness, it's all about experiencing that you're the ultimate. And like, what? why do people fear Hinduism? And then, I mean, it clicked. I was like, yeah, simply because, Sonji was saying, actually, before I jump into this, Sonji was saying, the, hin the Hindu, the Sanatana Hindu Dharma, is a knowledge-based tradition. It means it flourishes with knowledge. It does not believe in hard power. It is not about, you know, destroying your enemy and conquering and all that. It is not like that. It is a Hindu, it is a knowledge-based tradition. And what I realized is, yes, when people, different people, different cultures at different times in history have faced or have encountered Hinduism, because they were not brought up with the principles that Hinduism is bringing his people in Gurukuls, they just did not get it. They did not understand how Hindus were existing. And, but they knew that Hindus were powerful because Hindus had a lot of powers. Because naturally, when you align to the scriptures and you live Hinduism authentically, you start to manifest various forms of shaktis, various forms of powers, at, displayed at various times by various people in masses or sometimes individuals, it depends of the time and period. But they got scared. There's a book written, like I mentioned in another video, by an English people saying that how to destroy India. And they start by saying that India is a very, Indians, Hindus are very powerful, but this is the way how to destroy them. And they have a step-by-step -step guide of how you can destroy Hinduism. And the first thing is destroy Gurukuls. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Yes. And second thing is destroy Gurus. So these are two main things, because Hinduism flourishes with Gurukuls. But to have Gurukuls, you need to have Guru. Without Gurukuls, there is no Guru. Sorry, without Guru, there is no Gurukuls. So, uh, that is the fundamental thing, and that is why people cannot digest Gurus. When the being is dead, Ramakrishna, Ramana Maharshi, Vivekananda, people will chant his glory. But when they were alive, people were not chanting their glory. After they realized, oh my God, what kind of great beings they were. But the people at that time, they very few realized who these beings were. So that is because of the delusion we cherish. When the master is alive, it's not a joke. Master is an intense space. And you have to want it. Otherwise, you can't handle it. So the seeking and the yearning and the prayerfulness has to be very intense for you to be able to handle that intensity. Otherwise, if it's just a casual thing, it's like, you know, you're like, oh yeah, I want to play football. And then suddenly you put on a football field and then you see all these people all bulked up and all that. You're like, shit, I don't want to be here. <laughs> then you get out of the football field, you know? It's just a casual desire. Same thing goes with the guru. Oh yeah, I want to be with the guru. But then you go in the guru with the presence and you see the whole thing and you're like, ah, and then you run away because, because you, your desire was not sincere. That's fine. But abusing guru is a big problem. Is a big problem. Biggest problem, as far as I cognize. When you abuse one guru, when you become okay with the idea of abusing one guru, next thing you know, abusing two guru, no problem. Abusing all gurus, no problem. Who needs gurus? India never had gurus. Sanatana. Then your mind starts to take over, and before you know, the whole thing is destroyed. Abusing gurus is not a Hindu practice, is not a Hindu way of life. 
If you abuse a guru, you are not a Hindu, as far as I cognize. Because you do not understand the principle of Guru Tattwa, you do not understand the importance and the responsibility that gurus have within the role, within the space of Sanatana Hindu Dharma, and you do not realize how Sanatana Hindu Dharma has been existing and is existing today because of the gurus and the guru paramparas, the lineages of gurus. So that's a big blind spot that people have to look into. But coming back to Hindu phobia, when people came in front of Hindus and the knowledge that they were, the knowledge and power they were radiating, they didn't know how to handle it. So naturally they got frightened because they felt some, maybe some inferiority complex and they felt, oh my God, they're more powerful than us so they can destroy us. So then that survival instinct came up and you thought we should destroy them before they destroy us. That basic animal, wild, wild boar and tiger in the forest kind of behavior. I mean, it's okay, the tiger and the boar, they have to live their dharma and they have to exhaust their karmas, nothing wrong about that. But when humans are in the, in the human body and they're behaving like these two, there's a problem. The human body is not meant to experience that. The tiger and the boar, okay. The human body, no. So like that, uh, it's a big problem. And I realized that Hindu phobia is just being powerless in front of the powerfulness and the knowledge that Hindus have and Sanatana Hindu Dharma radiates and what Bharat used to be. So they decided to destroy and it's been happening for thousands of years, hundreds of years, thousands of years. Recently we have the Mughals and we have the British, but it was there before. So yeah, guys, Hindu phobia is just powerlessness, brainwashing. So what happens when you become powerless, you have to justify your violence. See, you're abusing. You cannot simply just abuse like that. You need to give your own yourself reasons why I should abuse, right? You need to justify your abusive nature, your violence, your hatred, your everything. So how do you justify it? You label it. How do you label it? It's called. It's best label. One word. Everybody, not everybody, but everybody who, uh, it, 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 it scares so many people. One word is enough. So afraid, fear, God, ah. It's not called. It's a culture. It's a tradition. It's been going on for thousands of years and every tradition which is alive today is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a kind of a side effect of Hinduism. They took few things and they went, some of them they took things authentically, some of them did not and they lost the nature of everything that they took from Hinduism that is different. Everything is there because of Hinduism and Sanatana Hindu Dharma. Like in the video I did yesterday, Sanatana Hindu Dharma is not 5,000 years old. It is much more than that. Let's not talk numbers. But it is much more than that. So it's just fear. Hindu phobia is just fear. Why? Because you feel that something is more powerful outside of you and more knowledgeable. So you feel threatened. Why? Because you were not taught the principle of oneness. You were not taught Paramashivoham or Aham Brahmasmi when you were a kid. That is why Gurukul is so important because when you grow up, you need to grow up knowing that you are Paramashiva, that you are Brahman. If you do not, if you're not taught the Paramashivoham principle when you are young, you will feel separated from the whole. And the moment you feel separated, you, you start to cherish duality. And in duality, you start to cherish fear and, um, you know, conquer, conqueror uh, kind of relationship. And then in sometimes you're the conqueror, sometimes you're the one who's being conquered and you just fight for your life and just try to survive. And that's why we grew up with amazing, I mean, terrible thought currents such as survival of the fittest. I mean, that, that's just like the basic animal kingdom thought current. And like I said, animal kingdom is fine because that is the purpose for which they assume animal bodies because that is the dharma and the karma, the karmas they decided to exhaust through assuming these bodies. But doing that as a human is a big problem because the human body is meant for enlightenment. It is not meant to fight and destroy your neighbor, destroy the next uh, city or uh, how do you use to call it, next province or whatever at different periods of times. It's not about war, it's about knowledge and becoming in oneness and Hindus are the embodiment of coexisting. And I'll make another video about that in the future. So with this, I thank you all. Um, like I said, I upload many videos a day. Click the bell icon so that you know uh, when I upload. You can check it out. Don't miss out. I think it's amazing content. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video.
subscribe, like, comment if you have any comments about this, share with friends. And let's, you know, of, of course, if you're into it, if you have this kind of knowledge as well, start make videos, enrich people with this knowledge. People need to know the greatness and how Hinduism is not about, it's about peace. In every Upanishad, it starts with Shanti Mantra and it finishes with Shanti Mantra. Shanti means peace. In the end, all this power is there, all this knowledge is there, but what is the purpose? Is to go coexist peacefully and powerfully. So nothing to be afraid of. Hindu phobia is just big blind spot, big ignorance of humanity that is afraid of Hinduism because they feel lesser than, which is not true. That's why we need to get initiated in the principle of Paramashivam, Mahavakya. So with this, I'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.